Today, we're taking a look at a question that was asked on my community website, Post Pro List, where we talk everything DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, and Fairlight. And the user was asking, is there a more efficient way to do an animation? They were working on a project that had a tight deadline. They weren't able to do it. They had a friend do it in Premiere, and I'm guessing After Effects. They went back to the project, and they were just curious if there was a more efficient way of creating a motion graphic like this in Fusion compared to how they did it. So. I'm going to take a look at it and hopefully through this process, everyone gets a little bit of my insight on how I would build something and maybe you might learn a few things to introduce into your workflow. So here's the project he sent over and it looks like I don't have a font. So let's go over here and take a look at what we got going on. And it looks like he has a bunch of groups and all the groups. Okay, they have a title and that's probably what's erroring out because the font. So now that should all work. Okay, he's got a media out here as well. Interesting. All right, so, so there's the animation. So why do we have a media out here? Do we have a different index? No, we don't. What is the index over here? Okay. So the first thing is that you don't need to have media outs here. The reason why you can have multiple media outs is because let's say you have, what do we got in here? Let's say we had um, a composite and let's say this was the shot and this house we're gonna blow up and we have to add in uh, other sources, right? So an explosion, different things like that. And maybe we wanna be able to color grade the explosion uh, on its own. And the tools that are in Fusion can get you pretty far, but they're very primitive compared to what's accessible on the color page. So what you would do is here, you would just change this index to one. It starts at zero, it goes one, two, three, and so on. On the color page, you would then add another source and then you could grab just that explosion and composite it back in and so on. So that's the reason on why you would have multiple here, but for this project, you don't actually need that. So let's take a look at this animation that we have here. All right, and let's take a look at how it was built. Okay, so it looks like it's, why is it up there now? Is it transform? Okay, so he's flipping it, it looks like. All right. It's interesting. All right. And then we have this, is this animated? Yeah, it is, the little box. All right, what else we have here? What is this for? Oh, that's how he's, okay, that's how he's animating it. Why is there a, all right. All right, so there's a lot of things here that we can change. What is this in here? Blend. Let's turn it off, okay. And then it's coming into a transform. What is this transform? Just making it smaller. And then we have a tracker. All right, so let me show you how I would do this. First, let's start, let's do this like a side-by-side. -side. First, let's start with creating this dot. So these are all of like the core old school, uh, okay, I don't really wanna call them old school, but this is like the old school way of creating a motion graphic of this nature. There's more efficient ways to do this and I'll show you using shape. So uh, all of the shape tools, let me show you here. All of these shape tools are actually all vector based and then you have a renderer which then uh, turns it into pixels, right? So it rasterizes it. And uh, it's just more efficient, especially when you're duplicating it a bunch of times, right? Because each one of these has individual pixels that it's accounting for and so on, where vectors don't have pixels. Um, they get turned into pixels, but it's just location data, if that makes sense. So let's uh, build this out. So how do we start here? Let's go. Sh so we start with an ellipse, so S ellipse. We'll add an ellipse and then what else do we have? We have an outside. So I'm just going to duplicate this. So control C while I have it selected and I'm gonna uh, paste it, it's going to make a merge, right? So it's cause it's combining those two. So let's, uh, let me look at the final one cause it's like down in the corner. So what I'll do is I'll just make this smaller and I'm just going to copy this over here, right? Okay, so that's that one. And then the other one I'm going to take down there as well. And we're going to turn this into 
a little ring. <clears throat> and currently you see it full. So all we have to do is turn off solid and then turn on border width. So there's that portion. And then we have this line next, right? Yeah, the lines next. So to do the line, we're going to add in an S polygon. And we will connect that in. And then I'm just going to, like I said, copy from here, the path. So it looks like it starts there, it comes up and over. <clears throat> currently, you don't see it in oops, currently, you don't see it in here. And that's just because we need to change the width. So now we have that. <clears throat> and what else did we have in here? Why do we have three paths? What is this? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, anyways, so this path, I think it's animated, right? Yeah. All right. So that would just be on the polygon. You have a length and that would just be that animation. And then it looks like we're flipping it, which we don't need to do because I'm building it right side up. If you did, you there's an S transform that you could use. What is this then? So this is the white box. So let's create that with another S polygon. We will connect that over and let me just view this so I can see where it's actually at just right above. Okay, so the second one, I'm just going to go right above like that and increase its width and take off caps. And then our animation would just be using the length again. <clears throat> All right, and then we have texts. So the text, I did see something that was a little interesting. And I'll show you here in a second, because I'm just going to copy this. We'll add our text and turn it black. All right. So in here you had this, you're using this brightness contrast to turn on and off the visibility of it. And you can actually do it in the actual uh, text itself by coming over in the shading and there's an opacity. So you wouldn't actually need this node, right? Because you're just processing the same pixels over again. All right. So now that we have that in this one, we also have that shading element that we can or control that we can use to animate. Was there anything else in here? What is this done? Oh, this is to turn it on and off, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we can do that later. <clears throat> Coming out of this, remember this is all um, vector data. So we need to turn it into a 2D image pixels. So we'll do S render and bring that in. And then we're done, right? So we take, I don't know how many nodes are here. We turn it into what is here, eight, seven nodes, right? So we'll take all of this and we'll go group. So then we have that. And then down here, we just made it smaller. So you could make it smaller inside here, right? Right before the renderer, or we can actually do it in a merge node. So <clears throat> what I'll do, is coming out of here, I'm just going to get a multi merge, right? So we'll just connect the multi merge up and I'm just going to disconnect this for now. We'll get the multi merge and then we will um, go out of the group into the multi merge. And if we take a look at this in the multi merge, we have this first um, layer here and you can name it whatever you want it to, but we can make it smaller because I feel like it was smaller before. And then it was like looking at one of these trees or something like that. Right. So that was how that animation was. And then we just have to track it. So to track it there, we have the center, I'm just going to right click modify with track position. And I don't like using IntelliTrack. So I'll just go point tracker, it's just a little lighter. Um, if you have a lot of parallax, sometimes IntelliTrack works a little bit better, but for now, I will just use the normal tracker and let's just go on this tree here. And we can see it in here. Uh, I change the per frames because you don't need to have every single frame tracked. You can, you know, skip between frames. Um, makes tracking a little quicker. And then we will just track, track that location for however long you need it to. And then we can just stop that. Now we have a tracked location that it locks onto. Uh, you'll notice that obviously the point isn't where the center of this is. So all we need to do is in the modifier under the tracker, we have an offset. So we'll just do the X, Y offset right onto that little point like that. And then from the beginning of this, 
going all the way around, you can see that it is locked on and tracked. So only other thing was that turning it on and off, right? So at the beginning here, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Uh, we can just go blend off and then a couple of frames in, turn it on. And then at the other end on a couple of frames, turn it off. And I feel like that was all of the, obviously I don't have these animations, but I showed you here where you could do all of those and then that's it. So moving forward with adding others in, all we would do from here, whoops, is I'm just going to collapse this, but we would just duplicate this. So control C, control V, connected in here. And then we're just gonna do all of the same settings that we had over here, right? So let's see, uh, this was like 27. You can put in here 27, oops, point, point two seven, And then it would just be moved up to like up there. Again, just tracking it. Position tracker, come over here, set it up the same way that we did. And then for the tracker itself, let's just do this white building, something easy to track on point tracker. We can track that. Once we're done, again, in tracker two now, offset up here. And then all you would need to do is come back over to the tools. For the second layer, obviously you really wanna name these so you don't start to lose them, but then you would just do your animations on and off and that would pretty much be it. But, oh, the other thing that I didn't really do is I didn't show you, uh, let's go back. Let's go into here and let's add in like an animation or two. <clears throat> um, Cause I didn't think of something. All right, so if I go full and full, what is an easy animation that I can copy here? Oh, okay, we have this little ball lighting up and moving, right? So I'll just show you going in and out like that. Uh, in the ellipse two, we're just going to go publish, right? Click connect to, oh man, there's a lot uh, line with, and now both of these are connected together. From here, we can just do our little animation. I don't know what the timing was on that, but you could go through and do your little animation maybe a little bounce back too. come into the spline open this up open here let's see that highlight all f smooth okay so there is our little animation right the reason why i want to do that is because if i copy this right and let's collapse that again copy and paste and now add it into <clears throat> that other part that we have tracked. One thing you'll notice is at the beginning, it's doing its little animation at the beginning, right? And that's obviously not when it would start because the tracking is like pretty far over here, right? So to get that to move over, I'm gonna click on the group, slide this over. I like to just have this on, uh, show only select it and we're in the keyframes. From here, we can take this group, you can see all of our keyframes here, and we would just pull it over. And then that, that would uh, retime all of our keyframes. So once we got to here, then we can see, you know, that's when our little animation is happening once it's all connected. From there, again, all you would need to do is just do the blend. And then uh, that would pretty much be that. Obviously, all of the other animations that are tied in there. But that's how I would do this. Um, it's a lot less when it comes to nodes and to figure out like what's actually going on again, it's only seven nodes versus probably like 12 or 13. I don't know how many are there. So I think that kind of concludes how I would have tackled this project, slightly different workflow and using slightly different tools, but uh, getting the exact same results. Now you can really do these projects any way you want. There's, you know, probably, five other ways that you can do a similar result. As the guy said, he had his buddy do it in Premiere and After Effects. So there's no wrong way. It's just that there might be a more efficient way. That's enough of me yapping. If you do want to um, ask your own question, you can go over the post pro list, create an account, 
And then under Fusion, you can add in your question there. There's a bunch of other categories as well and different discussions over there. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Until next one, guys. See ya.